to this session. Thank you, sir. Okay, so I will start by asking, why did Jesus really leave heaven, the glory he had with the Father, to be a human like us, to live on this earth? Start so that the man of God will cap it. Praise the Lord. First of all, I want to say thank you for this privilege to stand up here with my mommy and my daddy. I don't take it for granted. Praise God. You know, but mama, I was expecting that you're going to ask the question first to daddy. And when he says something, I'll just say, yeah, I can call like our, our daddy has said. <laughs> but now you're going to put me on the spot. Amen. How be it? You ask the question, why did Jesus leave his glory and his throne to come down to die for us? In one word, I'll say he did it for love. Because from John 3.16, one of the simplest scriptures, you know, as we can quote, he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him would not perish but have everlasting life. So in summary, the reason he did that was for love. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Yes, he hit it. Yes, I concur. <laughs> That was exactly my answer, and I was going to use John 3.16. I was going to say it was for the enormity of his love, to have left his glory, left being, <laughs> left being God. So you see now why you should have answered. <laughs> that he left being God, and the Bible says that he took upon himself the form of a man and died the death on a cross. That was like the... The, the lowest kind of death that a human could die. You know, so it was for the enormity of his love for us. Praise the Lord. Okay, so this other question goes to, goes to my right and your left. Praise the Lord. Was it necessary for Jesus to go through the torture and sorrow that he went through, that he endured to save humanity. Was that the only way he could save us? Yes, it was. Let me make it very clear that I'm hearing these questions for the first time. So there wasn't a prior prep. <laughs> okay. So, but yes, this is the salvation story, right? Yes, it was necessary for him to go through the torture and to go through what he went through to redeem us. There was no other way. Um, what did he use in redeeming us? We must, we must remember that the most important thing that was used in redeeming us was his blood. And why there was no other way is because there was no other blood that could redeem us. Prophets died, people were stoned to death, righteous men were killed all through the ages, right? But none had the blood enough to redeem another. There was something about the blood of Jesus, and I think we were teaching in church the other time, and we mentioned it. Let's find that scripture just quickly. Uh, Acts, I believe it's Acts chapter 20. Good. Acts chapter 20 and in verse 28. The Bible says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he had purchased with his own blood. With his own blood. So you see that the redemption was with his own blood. Jesus' blood was not the blood of Joseph. It wasn't the blood of Joseph. That's why it's not the seed of Joseph that fertilized the ovum of Mary. It was the power of the Holy Ghost that overshadowed her. So the ovum of Mary was overshadowed by the power of the Holy Ghost, as it were. So what sperm is in a natural birth is what the Holy Ghost was in the birth of Christ. So the blood, because science teaches us that a baby's blood is primarily gotten from his father, right from his father and the holy ghost was the one that fertilized the egg or the ovum 
of Mary. So the blood of Jesus was the very blood of God. And that's why the scripture says, whom he had purchased with his own blood. There was no other way than to shed his own blood, God's blood. Hallelujah. The Lord. Hallelujah. You want to add something? <laughs> uh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The next question is like a sequel to the question that was just answered. Okay, so why was Jesus chosen or why did Jesus choose? Because I know in heaven, Jesus chose according to Revelation. Who, when God was looking for who will come, the Lamb agreed to come. Why did Jesus accept to come? But our pastor said it all now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jesus Christ was chosen as the only begotten Son of God, you know, was born of immaculate conception. As scripture has said, the soul that sinned shall die, right? And it will take uh, a pure blood. You can't take a soul that has been corrupted, blood that has been corrupted already, because as long as you were born into the lineage of Adam, your blood was already corrupted. So it, it, it required an incorruptible seed, a blood that was still pure, that was, I mean, like Pastor has said, like I can go to what our Father has said, it required... And in, I mean, a very pure blood to come and do that sacrifice. And, you know, in the older days, like we see in the book of Leviticus, a type and shadow of what was to come in the New Testament. When you were to cast sin, you took a lamb that was without blemish or spot. The priest would take that lamb and they would transfer the sin of the person. It was even a, a kind of atonement just to appease for a particular period of time, basically for a year or so, the blood, I mean, the, the sin of a person was cast to the lamb that was seen to be pure, I mean, a clean lamb, and that transfer was done, and you were free to receive the blessing of God for a period of time, and that was done consistently. But when it was time for Jesus to come, it was required that Jesus' blood, Jesus comes, and the blood of Jesus was going to be, you know, a permanent sacrifice for for sin. That's why Jesus Christ came. So I don't know if I answered the question well. Okay. Okay. I thought, I thought the question was, so why did he choose? Why did he decide that he was going to be the one to come? Mm -hmm. Why did he agree? When they said, who will go? Why did he say, I will go? It's for love now. It's for love. Oh, oh no. I mean, it's for love. Okay. <laughs> no, you're correct, it's, but... <laughs> it's for love, right? Yeah, but you can add something for yeah. us. I should add something. Yes. It, it, it was for love. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. It was for love. There's, show there's, the love there's the no father. how else to rationalize it. Okay. Now, you would see that he was a perfect representation of the Father. And he was the best ambassador of the Father's love. And if you read in John chapter 6, is that John chapter 6, where Jesus is having a conversation with Philip. And he says, have I been with you for so long? And have you not seen the Father? He that had seen me had seen the Father. So you see, again, oh, thank you, Jesus. Hebrews 1 tells us something about him, that he was the express image of the Father. So there was no perfect ambassador, no perfect representation of the Father's love like the person of Christ. So he was the best, yes, was like God it, it, himself. He was God and himself was coming to die. Senior Pastor put it, the blood of God. It was like God shed his blood for you. So to cap it, let's talk about the significance of that death to every believer. Of his resurrection, death and resurrection to every believer. How he is our model okay. to see who the Father is and to walk our walk on the earth. Okay, well, there's so many things that we can uh, identify as the significance of the death and the resurrection of Jesus. Number one, Christianity will not have validity if Christ didn't rise. And that's why even when he arose, 
the chief priests paid soldiers to frame up a story. They said, tell the people that it was his disciples who came and stole his body, and now they are trying to, you know, because they knew that once it is well known and agreed that he rose up, then it gives validity to the way, which is, you know, Christianity. So his resurrection gives validity to the power of Christianity, the Christ life in us. And again, uh, Hebrews, I'm sorry, Acts chapter 4, verse 33 says, with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection. Witness. They validated the resurrection by the power of that resurrection. So the resurrection gives validity to Christianity. And um, I would also add that the resurrection gives validity to uh, the possibility of our dominion on the earth. If he could rise and if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus, Romans 8 verse 11, dwells in you, then he that raised up Jesus shall also quicken your mortal body. So the resurrection means that now I have power to overcome any kind of demon. Whatever devil couldn't hold him down in death cannot hold me down in defeat because the same spirit of the resurrection now lives in me. So there are many other things we can deduce from the death and the resurrection. Wow, praise the Lord. So the cry of it is finished meant that Jesus reclaimed the power that the devil stole from Adam and gave it to whoever will believe in Jesus, whoever will believe on his name and accept that God created us and he sent Jesus to die for us. We'll live in that dominion and we'll live like Adam and Eve were living in the Garden of Eden before the fall, before the sin. So you have that power resident in you. You have that grace resident in you. And most importantly, your model should be Jesus Christ. He lived on this earth. He was tempted in every way, according to the Bible. And there is no temptation that you will face today that Jesus didn't face, but he overcame. So through his power, you too can overcome. And that is the power of the resurrection. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So thank you so much, sir. Thank you. We are good. We are good. We are good. Thank you so much, Pastor GP. Help me celebrate Pastor GP and our daddy in the house of the word of God as you open up to grab a hold of the power and the transactions of the spirit in this place I'd like you to just join me as we pray in the Holy Ghost pray in the Holy Ghost Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Zita hata katele hazate ya alasa prakata ta ya zatara na haya zata lekete kera pakata bala marateka zabra topa lama hata bara kata bara ta lebeseke te protoshka lama hata kia zele boroko poto zeke repetele mahanda kadia halaba hase para bakosh mehiza lebe repeto Mahashanda Kita Lebrecosa Zenda Boho Roshiata. Bow down and work. Don't stop praying in the Holy Ghost. Just charge yourself. Sele Mahaka Pranias Katela Mahasa. Lebatoba Rabba Halaba Kita Pa. Laba Ropa Kashata Parakatea. Lebe Kete Pranias Tabarata. Lebe Kete Paraka Kaka 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 Kaka.
your throne. You are mighty on Lift those hands to give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you. Thank you for leaving heaven, coming to earth, and dying for me, the death on the cross, redeeming my soul and raising me up with you and setting me up at your right hand, seated with you in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Please, you may sit. Hallelujah. It is my prayer that on this mountain, in these three days, that you would catch light. You would have an encounter with God. You would see Jesus. And the evidence will be deposited in your life in the precious name of Jesus Christ. I encourage you to keep your heart open. Uh, the nature of today's um, service is going to be uh, more in the lines of teaching and power. So there will be teaching to, uh, to show you the things that you need to see. I'd like you to know that power stays with you every time you gain access to light. Power stays with you when you gain access to light. You can be in an environment of power and have a manifestation of power in your life, but it may not stay with you if you don't have lights that can produce power. Do you understand what I mean? So you can be in a service where you're ministered to and something happens. Maybe there's healing, there's deliverance, or, you know, something. But there is quite a difference when you catch light. From the teaching of the word of God. Light that stays with you. Light that you can use to produce power at will. For every encounter with light, access to power is gained. For every encounter with light, access to power. Access to power is gained. You will operate in power to the measure that you have light in your spirit. You will operate in power to the measure that you have light in your spirit. I believe that when we have light, we have dominion with ease. Dominion is a function of light. The Bible says in the book of Matthew 4 and verse 16, it says, They that sat in darkness saw great light. To them that sat in the regions and shadow of death, light is sprung up. And that one verse of scripture is one of the verses that demonstrates the 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 statement that captures Jesus' ministry. The entire essence of the coming of Jesus was for the light to shine so that them that sit in darkness can be set free. There is no darkness that can remain in you when you catch a light that corresponds with it. When you catch a light that corresponds with it. James 1 verse 17, every good gift and every perfect gift they come from above. They come from God, the Father of lights, in whom is neither variableness. In whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Right? So every good gift. Uh, the one thing I love in that verse is that every good gift, every good gift has a light that corresponds with it. Every good gift. Every good gift. And I like the part where light is put in plural form in this verse. Amen. God is introduced to us in this verse as the father of lights. The father of lights. There is light for healing. There is light for health. There is light for financial command. There is light for dominion. There is light for whatever it is that you want to experience in your life. And so I pray that on this mountain, you will have encounters with light. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. The crossroad of Jesus. Not crossroad. Crossroad as one word is uh, a different thing from crossroad as two words uh, hyphenated in between. The cross road of Jesus. Cross hyphen road. The cross road of Jesus. The cross road of Jesus. So the way of the cross. Jesus is way of the cross. What the cross signifies. And so today we'll just capture the efficacy of his death. Like the power of his death. Why did he die? What does it mean? And we're going to lay 
and lay and lay upon it. Tomorrow I'm going to talk uh, a bit more about his name and I'm going to also center it in the area of healing and I trust God that there will be signs, wonders, diverse miracles, that there will be healings, that people will encounter the light with which to appropriate healing in their lives and to walk in it and to walk in it and to walk in it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Get the teachings for the weekend. Get the teachings and listen to them again. I am going to run as fast as possible. Some things will need you time to process. You have to go back to the audios and sit and listen and pause and think over and meditate so that the light sinks in. It's not enough to be a listener. It's important to be a retainer of the word. It's not enough to be a hearer of the word. It's important to be a retainer. That's why the Bible teaches us that... I, even though hearing is good, but hearing by itself does not guarantee the entire profit, right? We saw that in the book of James chapter 1. Let's take a look. In James chapter 1, James chapter 1, let's look at it from verse 22, and then we'll terminate at verse 25. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Put a pause there. Now, this is how to gain revelation from the word of God. So, we can unpack this verse by saying, hearing is good. Right? Okay. Uh, keep it there. You remember the scripture that says, man shall not live by bread alone. Matthew 4 verse 4, Luke 4 verse 4. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. Does that scripture say bread is bad? So, bread is good. What is bread from the context of that scripture? What? Food. What kind of food? Physical food that nourishes the body. And then the scripture says, man shall not live by bread alone. Man shall not live. Okay? So it means that what guarantees life and well-being is beyond balanced diet. Is beyond balanced diet. So you've got to pay attention. And then he says, but by. So what perfectly complements eating physical food is feasting on spiritual food. And it tells us where it comes from. It says from the mouth of God. From the mouth of God. How do I get this food? From the mouth of God. When you look through scriptures, you see that meditation is what guarantees feasting from the mouth of God. I can show you some scriptures. Job chapter twenty. 2 verse 21 says acquaint now thyself with him to acquaint yourself with someone means to be involved to expose yourself to the person's lifestyle his doings so it simply means to have a robust study life acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace he says thereby good shall come unto thee i understand that the longer i stay in the scriptures my spirit gets charged and becomes magnetic to things. He said, good shall come. He didn't say you will look for good. It shall come to you. Because there's a magnetism, a certain spiritual mag magnetism that happens when we stay on the word of God. The word of God carries charge, spiritual charge. When you meditate on it, it charges your spirit. Your spirit begins to attract certain things and repel certain things. Your spirit can repel sickness. It can attract health. Oh, yes. Teachings. I did a teaching on programming your spirit for victory. Uh, there's another teaching I'm trying to remember the name where I centered very much on Proverbs 18 and I, I think I read verse 14 and then verse 20 and 21. Very powerful, very powerful scriptures there. Anyways, so... Acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace thereby. Good shall come unto thee. Receive, I pray thee, the word at his mouth and lay up his words in your heart. So in acquainting yourself with him, you begin to receive the word from his mouth. From his mouth. From his mouth. Hallelujah. That's in verse 22 of Job 22. In Acts chapter 10, Peter had been praying on the rooftop. And then he sees the vision that he saw. And in that confusion, the Bible says he meditated on it. Verse 19 says, while he yet taught on the vision, the Holy Spirit said, is, is that there? While Peter taught on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, behold, three men seek you. So how did he 
take from the mouth of God by meditation. Again, in Psalm chapter 1, you remember verse 1? Blessed is he that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But he's what? Delight. What does it mean to delight in something? To have a deep love for. To have strong affection for. To have passion for. And there is no way you have strong affection for something and you won't spend time with it. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And we find that delight manifest in just the words that follow. And in his law, does he meditate momentarily? No. Does he meditate day and night? Always. 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 When he stays with it long enough, he shall be. Something happens to him. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That bringeth forth fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper, because he has contacted something. He now carries something. Meditation is what gives you access to the deposits of light. Meditation brings you to a place where your spirit gets charged with power. You become something. You can't stay long enough in the word and not have evidence in your physical life. It's not possible. It's not possible. There must be evidence. There must be evidence. There must be evidence. Proverbs 4 verse 20. My son, give attention to my words. Incline thine ears unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them. Keep. 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 Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life to those that find. So there is a finding that only happens when you stay with it long enough. They are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh medicine when there is an abundance of the word in your spirit it overflows into your flesh when there's an abundance of the word in your spirit it manifests in your flesh go and listen to my message supernatural rejuvenation you will love it and i taught in that teaching the secrets to always looking young amen it will save you money too. <laughs> it will save you money. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. So let's go to where we were. Go back to that scripture in James chapter number one. But be doers of the word and not hearers only. So hearing only doesn't profit you. You have to be a doer. But let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. Right? For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Verse 25. Let's read verse 25 together. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and... Wait, he look at and, he look at and, so he starts by looking, but there must be what? A continuing therein. And continue therein. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. There is work to do to get light. There is work to do to carry power. There is work to do. To have the evidence of what you've been looking at and what you've been hearing. But a doer of the work. This man. This man. This man. This man shall be blessed in all his did. There is nothing he will do that will not leave the prince of divinity on it. There is nothing that he will do that won't carry the signature of God on it. This man shall be blessed. So the secret is in continuing, keeping, doing. That's the work. Keeping it. Keeping it. He said, don't be a forgetful hearer. The only way you won't be a forgetful hearer is to do revision. 
The only way you won't be forgetful here is to speak it to yourself often until it gets into your spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The crossroad of Jesus. The death of Jesus was substitutionary. He didn't need to die. He didn't need to die. But he did. For our sakes. For our sakes. There is nothing Jesus did in his death or resurrection that he needed for himself. Everything he did was for our sakes. His death was substitutionary. So he died for us. He died in our place. He died for our sakes. He died to do something that we were not able to do. We are the end product and the only beneficiaries of his death. The death of Jesus was substitutionary. Let's go back to the beginning. Adam was the administrator of the earth. God created the earth and submitted everything to Adam to govern it. He was a caretaker. God gave him custody of the things he had created. But Adam committed high treason. How did he commit high treason? He had no moral justification to sell out something that was put in his trust. He was not the owner of earth. He was only the administrator. So he could not transfer. There could be no deed of assignment to transfer earth to somebody else when he was not an owner. A uh, lawyer. Can somebody, for example, who is the caretaker of another person's property, decide one day that he's been caretaker long enough to be able to come to you to help write a deed of assignment to transfer what he does not own to somebody else and take money for it. Thank you. Now, so that's what Adam did. He transferred what was given to him to keep in trust to Satan. How did he do it? How did he do it? Simply, he obeyed Satan. He puts, now, there are certain laws that exist in the realms of the spirit and he struck one of those laws and set it in motion. I'll show you. Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. Know ye not, and I like it on the screen. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself a servant to obey. His servant you are, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Think about it again. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourself a servant to obey. His servant you are to whom you obey. So you become in the realms of the spirit. Whatever you obey, you serve. Whatever you obey, you serve. That's why when there's a temptation, a temptation rising in your flesh, and you act in favor of it, you have obeyed it, and so the devil gains sway, holds sway over you. What you obey, you become subservient to. What you obey, you become a servant of. What you obey, you reduce yourself under. You say, well, now, and if you read carefully in that entire chapter, this has a lot to do with Adam. How did Adam obey? Let's look at it. In the book of Genesis chapter 3, we'll do verse 1 to 10 very quickly. It was failure on Adam and Eve's part to give heed to Satan's questioning the authenticity of the word of God. How can God speak to you and somebody says, did God really say, uh, why did he say that? He knows that if you listen to this thing, this is what it's going to become. So they placed Satan over God in giving heed to what the devil was saying to them. Let's see the story. Genesis chapter number 3. Is somebody here tonight? Genesis chapter number 3. Now from verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yeah, had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. You must be careful in your life when things begin to question what God has told you. Listen, when you begin to ask questions that negate what you know God has said, 
Be careful because the devil has you in the corner. What is really wrong with fornication? And the Bible says, flee fornication. Uh, you are now questioning the authenticity of the word of God. What's really wrong with, but you know what the Bible says. When you start asking yourself, how do we know we are sexually compatible unless, of course, we have sex before marriage and check ourselves out, you know, long enough to understand compatibility. And yet the Bible says that he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. How do you disobey God to, how, how, how exactly do you get to a place where you can comfortably question the authority and authenticity of the word of God? That's the devil at work. That was his strategy from the beginning. Holiness is not a religious thing. Holiness is not a walk step. Holiness is not an angling of the neck. Holiness is not the absence of earrings from your ears. Holiness is not a type of, of, of smile. <laughs> Holiness is subjecting yourself to the authority of the word of God as your first and final authority. That's what holiness is. And I'm telling you when the word of God is in your life, when you get in the wrong clothes and look in the mirror, the Holy Spirit is going to prompt you to change them. Oh, come on somebody. Yes. When the word of God is in your spirit and you're going somewhere with the wrong intention, the Holy Spirit will check you. And if you yield to him, you're going to do a U-turn. Go somewhere else or go back home. When the word of God is in your spirit and you take out that phone, you're missing someone so bad who has no business being in your life and you begin to scroll down to their number, the Holy Ghost is going to make those fingers, you, 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 you will just begin to have slow motion. And a civil war happening in your spirit, you know. Oh my God, has somebody been there before? submitting yourself to the authority of the word of God where the word governs you hallelujah praise the Lord Genesis 3 so the devil comes by and says uh, <laughs> so did God really say that you should not eat of every tree of the garden that's what he told you your first response to anything or anyone that questions the authority of God's word in your life is to rebuke. That's your first response. You don't entertain a conversation that questions the authority of God's word in your life. <laughs> Verse 2. And the woman said unto, unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden... God had said, ye shall not eat it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Her first mistake was to have a conversation with the wrong person. Her first mistake was to be interested in having a fellowship and a conversation with the wrong person. Her mistake was to bring out something that gave her a security system in her life and bring it into conversation with a stranger. There are covenants God has given you. There are things God has said to you. They are not for discussion. They are for action. Samson's fall happened when he began to discuss or when he began to discuss when he began to discuss his covenant with Delilah. Nowhere else is there record that he ever had a discussion with someone about where, the, where his power is. Your power is in your covenant. Our power as believers is in the covenant, the word of God. What's the source of your power? And then he begins to lie, begins to lie, begins to play around it, play around it, play around it, play around it until his defenses were down. There are things you flee. You don't have to try to give excuses about. Take a sip. Oh no, my head is light, you know. And 
yeah, I just don't feel like drinking right now. You don't drink and you cannot say, I do not drink. I'm like, um, yeah, the way I'm feeling right now, no, I'm just not in the mood. You don't drink, can't you say you don't drink? You are not in the mood? Okay, you have suggested that there is a time when you'll be in the mood and you can drink. And then the person begins to say, well, I really feel embarrassed just sitting here by myself, just drinking. Oh, come on, at least keep me company. Take a sip. A sip won't hurt, just a sip for me, for my sake. Just take a sip. For my sake, for my sake. So I can feel comfortable. Please, come on. Like, well, mm-mm. Um, now you run out of excuses. You don't know what to say. You are in a corner. Just a sip. Okay, just a sip, I promise. Just a sip. I won't force you. And you take a sip. You have sown a seed. So tell me, did you like it? And then they begin to tell you, look, this is a very expensive wine. One bottle is 375,000 naira. It is good for the heart. (laughs) And you know, when you come to places like this and you hang around important people like myself, you should, you should, you know, these are the kind of things you identify with, you know. A seed has been sown into your mind. They just sowed a seed of inferiority complex into your mind. So the next time you're in such a gathering, instead of identifying with your usual malt, now you're going to put small in a glass just so that you can blend in with the people. Then one day it's going to be your birthday and you're going to get a whole bottle as a gift for love's sake. You know, I mean, I love you enough to spend this much. This is nothing. This is what we do for people on the streets. Not talk of someone special, really special. You mean so much to me and, you know, I really don't know how to show it, but I'm hoping that this is a very little token that can express the enormity and the depth, the efficacy of my love for you. (laughs) That now becomes your object of pride and belonging into this false class that has been presented to you. You left the class of God and you're seeking the class. Uh, Don't have certain conversations. Don't go to certain places. Don't even start it. Don't even start it. And if you do the kind of business or you're involved with the kinds of interactions where you're going to be sitting with many different kinds of people, of course, I mean, there are jobs and businesses and things that will put us in a place where we're interacting with different kinds of people in society. Make sure you know yourself well enough to say from the beginning, oh, no, I don't drink alcohol. And when they look at you like, smile and look back. You can't make me feel inferior for what I'm doing that's even better than you. Be bold in who you are. Be confident in who you are. Drops of alcohol in malt, just so that you know, because, ah, really? I don't drink. Do you sniff? You've not been in places where you will hear things. It's just normal with these guys. The way people break color is the way people share, you know, sniffables. Yep, the way people will share color, not like some people. That's cocaine or meth. Heroin. Or people are passing. Vape. <laughs> Just vape and pass it on. Pass it on. Pass it on. <laughs> Devil's pot. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, be confident in who you are in Christ. Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The Bible says you are complete in him. Tell somebody else you are complete in Christ. Tell somebody you are complete in Christ. 
There's nothing missing. You don't need cocaine to complete anything. You don't need heroin to complete anything. You don't, you, you, you don't have to sprinkle Indian hemp uh, 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 in pasta and indomie to, to complete anything. Oh, yeah, I prayed for someone who ran mad the other time. Yes, they brought him to, this, to my office. This was a few years ago. Someone I know who used to be here. He had ran mad. I was amazed. A young man I knew. So after we casted out the nonsense, what happened? What happened? And he said his friends, you know, they were doing this thing. His friends use Indian hemp as vegetable for Indomie. As vegetable in a class. There's afang, there's ugu, there's bitter leaf. There's wheat. And so he did and ate that Indomie. And ran mad. Oh yeah, I was here shouting left, right, and center. Someone I know. <laughs> saying things, saying strange things, and shouting strange things. Those things don't move me. Hey! Sit down. <laughs> Sit down. said sit in the name of Jesus out then he told us the story <laughs> when he was in his right mind there are things you shouldn't even start there are certain people you should not even be hanging out with is it every challenge you jump into you have not finished winning souls. That is the permanent challenge we have. Go into the world <laughs> and preach the gospel. <laughs> Make disciples of all nations. Permanent challenge. Igbo in Indomie challenge. Whoop, you've jumped inside. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So Satan came and began to have a discussion with her and she is talking about what God said to her. Verse 4, and the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Wow. And she was still in that conversation. Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Satan is suggesting that God was hiding something from them. God deceived them. Our God knows that if you eat it, this is what's going to happen. You're going to be as gods. They were already gods. They were already gods. I have said ye are gods. All of you are children of the most high. Psalm 82 verse 5. They were already gods. But he said ye shall be as gods. And because they didn't already know who they were, they fell for it. It's important to have light. Know who you are. And it was the same trick that, this, that the devil brought to Jesus in the Mount of Temptation. He said, bow down to me and I will give you all these things. You see, Jesus kept rebuking him. And bringing the word of God to counter whatever it was. Jesus who created all things. John chapter 1 from verse 1 in the beginning was what? The word. The word was with God and the word was God. Verse 3 says, all things were made by him. Then the devil comes to tell him, bow before me and I will give you these things. Ha! The things I created. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. My friend, get out from here. But that had been his weapon from the beginning. You shall not surely die. God knows that. Ah, the day you eat this thing, man, you're going to be as a God. Okay. Verse Verse 5 
said, your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, so at this point her defenses had broken, and instead of looking at things from the eyes of God, she started seeing them from the eyes of the devil. What you listen to will determine your perspective and the actions that will follow. And she ate it. Her husband came. They both ate. And <laughs> uh, what happened? Verse 7, and the eyes of them both were opened in the wrong direction, and they knew that they were naked. They had, they had left one realm, they exited one realm, and entered another realm. They were looking at things from a spiritual place. That's where they were. That's where God put them. But now, they gave heed to what the devil said. They left that realm and came to the flesh, and they started seeing things in the flesh. They saw that they were naked, and they sold figs or fig leaves together and made themselves aprons and they heard verse 8 the voice of the lord god walking in the garden in the cool of the day and adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the lord presence of the lord god among the trees of the garden i realized um, in my experience of dealing with christians and believers that many times when a believer begins to run away from accountability, shy away from the authority figures that God has placed in their lives, run away from the place of fellowship with other believers, run away. You know how you call someone, where are you? We're not seeing you. Oh, I traveled. Every time I traveled, I traveled, I traveled. I traveled, I traveled. I'm not around. I'm not around. I'm not around. I'm not around. There are very few people who truly traveled and were not around. Some traveled beginning of last year, came back two weeks after. From that time till now, they've not traveled, but I traveled. <clears throat> because they don't want to be seen. They don't want to have a discussion. They don't want to be accountable. They have departed from the place where they ought to be. When you fall from grace, shame naturally happens. And that's what the enemy wants a believer to experience. He pushes you to an edge where you fall out of fellowship with God and your nakedness becomes obvious to yourself. They heard the voice of God and heed themselves. They heed themselves. Verse 9, and God called unto Adam and said unto him, where art thou? Do you think God was looking for where man was physically? He could see him. He's all-knowing. He's omniscient. He could see him. But when he said, where art thou? He was asking him about his spiritual positioning. I left you in this spiritual position. I have come to the place in the realm of where I interact with you. You are absent. Where are you? Where are you? This is the realm where we used to have fellowship. I have come there, but you're not there. Where are you? Verse 10, lastly. And he said, I heard the voice. I heard thy voice in the garden and was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself verse 11 and he said who told you that you were naked have you eaten has thou eaten of the tree whereof i commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat who told you that question burns in my spirit god questioned adam's source of information for the first time in his life adam had lived by revelation Adam had lived by the word of God. Adam was ruled by what God said. He operated by thus saith the Lord. That's what governed his life and governed his operations as the administrator of God's earth. For the first time he opened his mouth, God said, where did that come from? That information didn't come from my heart. That information didn't come from my book. That information didn't come from my mouth. That information didn't... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Who told you? Who told you? Before now when Adam spoke, God said, yes, it is so. You remember? God created the animals and called Adam to name them. The Bible says the name Adam called them were the names thereof. Meaning when Adam said, this is a lion, God said, yes, it's true. This is a dog. Yes, it's true. This is a squirrel. Yes, it's true. This is a chipmunk. Yes, it's true. 
This is an iguana. Yes, it's true. This is an alligator. Yes, it's true. This is a cobra. Yes, it is true. This is a boa constrictor. Yes, it is true. This is an anaconda. Yes, it is true. That's a whale. Yes, it's true. This is a frog. Yes, it's true. That's an octopus. Yes, it is true. But this day he opened his mouth and God said, who told you? Where did that come from? His fall was a product of what he had heeded to and what he began to hear. His death was substitutionary. We were born in sin and naturally doomed for death. Romans 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6 verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we were owing death. As a matter of fact, at Adam's sin, he died spiritually because God had said to him, the day you eat it, you shall die. He was physically alive but spiritually dead. Spiritual death, that means he was separated from God. There was no more fellowship between him and God. No more communication between heaven and himself. Sin puts a stumbling block between God and man. Sin separates between God and man. I remember, was that Jeremiah? Or Isaiah that said that speaking, God speaking through that prophet said that my ears are not too heavy to hear, neither are my hands too short to save. But your sin has separated between you and me. Your sin has separated. And so sin brought a separation between God and man. Man literally died. He was physically alive but spiritually dead. It's interesting to me that spiritual life trumps natural life that what matters really is whether you are connected to God spiritually and truthfully everything else is going to fall into place if your spiritual connection is intact you won't have any challenges with your natural living your natural life will naturally respond to your spiritual connection if your spiritual connection dies, no matter how robust your natural life is, it is meaningless and nothing. Man was not recognized to be alive as long as his spiritual connection with God was severe. The day you eat it, you will die. And he died. He could still talk. He could still walk. But he died. In the eyes of God, this was a spiritually dead man could no longer do business with heaven, could no longer fellowship with the angels. All of the things that he, 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 he had the privilege to command, he lost because of sin. We couldn't pay the debt of death. Debt is D-E-B-T. Debt is called debt. 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 We couldn't pay the debt of death. We couldn't pay it. 2 Corinthians 5.14 gives us good news. For the love of Christ constrained us. Because we thus judge. That if one died for all, then we're all dead. Do you understand what that means? That this man who came to die. He didn't die for only this one person. He died for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. His death was on their behalf. His death was enough to cover for all the deaths that they were to die. That means we can say, she died. He died. He died. He died. She died. She died. She died. She died. She died. And she died because this one death covered for all. It's just like saying... All of them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, needed to pay school fees. And one man comes and pays for all of them. When they show up, the school says, she has paid, he has paid, he has paid, he has paid. She, 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 she has paid and she has paid because the payment was for all. His death was on our behalf. We can stand and say, I died with Christ. And that's what the Bible is saying. Because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. 
I died and I paid. Ha! Huh. We died with him. Ephesians 2, 4 to 6. Very quickly. Ephesians 2, 4 to 6. But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. Wow, great love wherewith he loved us. Even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And had raised us up together. Somebody say raised us up together. You cannot use the words raised us up together unless we were in debt together. Raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. Wow. He died to redeem us. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 45. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Hallelujah. Jesus is called the last Adam. He came to quicken us. He came to give life back to us. Everything that was lost is now gained. Romans 5 verse 17 to 19. For if by one man's offense, that's of course the first Adam, death reigned by one. Much more, they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign. Ha! Tomorrow I'm going to, I'm going to emphasize it. Death reigned by Adam's sin. What does it mean to reign? Listen, that's how sickness came into the bloodline of humanity. That's how destructions, that's how oppressions, came into the bloodline of humanity, death reigned. To reign means to gain sway. To reign means to sit in a place of authority. To reign means to determine what happens. To reign means to call the shots. To reign means to exercise rulership, control, and power. Death reigned when Adam fell. Now, by one man's obedience, woe, we have received the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. And with it, <laughs> now we call the shots. We have gained ascendancy over the things that once ruled over us. Oppression gained access by the fall of the first Adam. Now dominion has gained access by the rising of the last Adam. Hallelujah. We reign with what we receive. Now we can look for sickness and begin to deal with them. We will look for oppressions and begin to deal with them. We will look for things in our bloodline that have no business being there. And we will begin to deal with them. We will refuse verdicts that existed before our birth. <laughs> Amen. Some of us come from places where strong wickedness strong wickedness existed for a long time. And you see patterns and operations that show that there must be a verdict. There must be satanic priests administering prescriptions and judgments on this bloodline. Sir, so you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so we have had to be rugged to grow in faith and the anointing to kill priests. Forget about ministrations of the altar. If there's no priest to minister there, the altar is of no, is of no value. Is of no value. There are satanic priests that must not leave. You don't know what wickedness is. <laughs> Yeah, some of you don't have any idea what wickedness is. I know what it is. I know what it is to almost sit back and predict that between this time and this time, there'll be another death. There'll be another one. And then another one. And another one. I know what it means to sit and look. And when you see people rise in wealth and you... You just know that <laughs> there's going to be a terminal point very soon, just like others. Your birth was not for you to be a spectator. 
your birth was for you to dictate <laughs> what should be and what is preferred in your bloodline. Every bloodline disaster manifesting from generation to generation is the product of a wicked man standing and making declarations. Righteous men must understand their authority enough and must know how to exercise rulership in their bloodlines. Hallelujah. You showed up to close a chapter and open another one. You showed up to terminate an undesirable chapter and to initiate a desirable one. Hallelujah. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees. So there are wicked men that decree unrighteous decrees. Isaiah 10 verse 1. You, the righteous man, shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. In the realms of the spirit, there is a war of tongues. There is a war of words. Don't be surprised. Job 5, I believe is in verse 16. Check verse 16 or so. He said, iniquity stopped her mouth. Look at it, verse 16. Iniquity stopped her mouth. The entire system of iniquity that corrupts bloodlines is founded in words that have been spoken from wicked altars. We don't exalt wicked altars. I'm a mobile altar. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that's who you are. That's who you are. The Bible says God has called you as a king and a priest. Uh, a priest is a custodian of an altar. And then a king and an and, and exerter of dominion. Hey! Hallelujah! Glory to God! No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Isaiah 54 verse 17. And every tongue that shall rise up against you in judgment, you too must exercise your tongue. You condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, said the Lord. Meaning your new status of righteousness puts you in a place as a speaker over your bloodline. A seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted for a generation. There are things your generation will enjoy that are a function of what you're saying today. I told you, you're an ancestor in training. Our ancestors spoke blah, 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 blah. Look at the evil that is happening. You are the ancestor that will be referenced in time to come. Start practicing your ancestorship. Start putting to work your righteous ancestorship. The next few generations, they should look back and say, we had an ancestor that was a righteous man. He declared in this family that untimely death ceases. And so it was. We are here celebrating 110 years old. Myself, look at him, he's 125. Look at him, he's 93. The young ones are 87. Oh, somebody, are you seeing it? Come on, shout hallelujah! So because we had an ancestor that declared it, that declared it, that declared it. The man himself speaking says, I just came back from the farm. <laughs> At 117 years old. 117 years. Hallelujah! Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. For by one man's offense, death reigned by one. Romans 5, 17, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. You didn't receive Jesus for play. You didn't receive Jesus for jokes. You didn't receive Jesus just to wait to go to heaven. No, you received him to, to, to be empowered to exercise your righteousness. Get angry. Return and say, this cannot continue. Why? Because I'm here. Because I'm here. When Archbishop declared that the meeting of the Council of Witches was not going to hold the conference, right? The international conference. The witch representative, the witch ambassador that was, <laughs> that was on national television with him said, even God can't stop it. He said, you are correct. That's why I'm here. It's, it's too small for God to do. What is God coming to stop this? For what? He said, yes, you are correct. That is why I am here. 
when you have light, hey, your authority prospers. And he asked him, are you a witch? The man could answer, are you a witch? He only needed to answer. He said, because before you sat down, I took your power. <laughs> the thing didn't hold him Benin. It didn't hold. It didn't hold. They changed the address. Update, update. International Conference of Witches. <laughs> address has been moved. <laughs> has been moved. Because of a man who had light. Every day you are sitting to cry about what's happening in your family. We, 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 why this family? Why was I born in this family? We, 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 we. Crying for what? You were born in that family because you are the savior of that family. Obadiah, verse 20. Savior. Didn't say, the savior is Jesus. But there are saviors, those of us born of Christ. Saviors shall arise upon Mount Zion. And they shall charge the Mount of Esau. And the kingdom shall be our gods. Saviors. How is everybody to this wicked family? Because you are the light that the family needs to excel. Today we have broken barriers. My uncle is in the service. My dad's younger brother. <laughs> He's a pastor, Pastor Paul. He's a pastor in Living Faith Church. And uh, we have a lot of history together. Yes, we have a lot of history. A lot of history together. And I, I want to thank you publicly for honoring me the way you do. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He was in the office yesterday. You know, he was about to go. He gave me a very good prophet's offering. Amen. I won't tell you how much. Don't worry. Don't worry. And this Easter, please, I'm very busy. Don't visit my house. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's wrap up tonight and we'll be ready for tomorrow. Are you blessed already? Yes. Glory to God. Verse 18 says, Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Verse 19. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So, by one man's obedience, or so, by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. I have been made righteous. I reign. I have rulership. I have power. I make decrees that stand. Look, live with it. That's who you are. That's your new status. Go back to that scripture. Isaiah 54 verse 17. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tall that shall rise up against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Don't stop there. The same verse, the last part says, and this is what? The heritage of the... the, heritage of the what is heritage? Huh? Right. right or inheritance. You know in Christ we have entered an inheritance... That scripture is showing you one of the things that you have inherited now in Christ Jesus. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their and their and their is of me, said the Lord. So your righteousness empowers you to talk and to counter words that have existed in the realms of the spirit that are contrary to you. You are the solution to your family. You are the help that God sent to your bloodline. I said you are the help that God sent to your blood. That's why you should stop fooling around. You are... This is someone's bloodline helper. You are drinking and getting drunk from street to street. Bloodline helper. You. Bloodline helper. Bloodline helper. You won't be sleeping around and corrupting the bloodline more. No. You are... Hallelujah. That's who you are. 
and you need holiness to act as a preservative of the power you have received in your new inheritance. Romans 1 verse 4, Jesus was declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness. You Bloodline, bloodline, you are the bloodline helper that God sent to your family. You can't be fooling around. You can't be having stupid conversations day in, day out. No! There must be a sense of spiritual responsibility that you carry and go about your duties. You are not ordinary. Zita Kaponde Siasa. You are not ordinary. You are not ordinary. If you continue to cheapen what your heritage is, you will continue to serve what the devil has to offer until you wake up and become serious about who you are in Christ and it rubs into your spirit and rubs into your mentality. There are things that will never shift. You are the spiritual avatar. Huh? Praise God. You can bend all elements. Don't worry. Air, water, and fire. You bend them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. And I realize that even animes, animations in America, we call them animes. You know, animes and certain movies are designed to show that there is always a savior somewhere that was prophesied from the ages who comes and rescues a people, a nation, a bloodline, a generation. What does the Bible say you are? A chosen generation. He looks at you but calls you a generation. You're Actions will influence a generation. Your words will position a generation. Get serious. Get serious. There are things that your grandchildren will enjoy that will come from the actions of faith that you're taking today. There are things your great-grandchildren will enjoy that will come from the actions of faith that you're willing to take today. That you're willing to take that you're willing to take. What did he do when he died? I'll say a little. I'll leave the rest for tomorrow. Ephesians 4 verse 9. Now that, now that he ascended. What is it? But that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. So Jesus went to hell. Did Jesus go to hell? <laughs> he went to hell. Was he a sinner? But did he carry sin? He didn't go to hell as a sinner. He went to hell as a bearer of sin. He had borne our infirmities. Isaiah 53. Right? The word bear in the Hebrew means to carry from one location to an unknown destination. So he was a bearer of sin he did not commit. The Bible says you're tempted in all ways, but what? Without sin. So he didn't commit a sin. But he bore our sin. And in bearing our sin, he went to hell. Bearing our sin. He paid the price for every sin that was committed. He paid the price to undo the spirit of sin and the life of sin that was in us. And when God justified him that yes, you have paid. If a judge sentences someone to seven years in prison. Lawyer. Question. Someone does something ridiculous. Maybe he robs a bank or does whatever it is that he does. And he's given a sentence of seven years imprisonment. He serves seven years. After that, is there anything that can be held against him? Huh? After serving his time. So, what's the verdict after he has served his time? 
Yes. And he cannot be tried again for the same. Okay, we have some people who work in the court system. And he cannot be tried again for the same offense. That's amazing. He has saved it. So Jesus carried our sins, went to hell. He, he, he paid all that was owed. God saw it. The judge of all said, okay, now they have paid. That's it. And that's why the Bible says he was what? Justified. Justified means, yes, now you are no longer owing. Wow. Hallelujah. Praise God. So he went to hell. Colossians 2, 10 to 15, last verses of scripture. Colossians 2, 10 to 15. Colossians 2, 10 to 15. And ye are complete in him, which is the head. Can you personalize it as we read together? And I am complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also I am circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also I am risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who had raised him from the dead. Verse 13. And I, being dead in my sins and the uncircumcision of my flesh, had he quickened together with him, having forgiven me all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against me, which was contrary to me, and took it out of the way of my life. Bata, bata. Nailing it to his cross. Who is the carpenter that can unnail what Jesus has nailed? Where is he from? What part of the evil forest is he from? Verse 15. And having spoiled principalities and powers. That's now. So verse 15 is what you're going to give me in a few translations. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. That's what King James says. Now, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Another translation of the same verse. He disarmed. Come on, everyone. I like us to read it. He what? Disarmed the rulers and authorities and disgraced them publicly. He triumphed over them by him. Stop, stop, stop. When the Bible says publicly, uh, what constitutes the public here in the context of this verse? What constitutes the public? Huh? People who are watching. Yeah, so who were they? Where? How do we know? We need to know people who are watching because it has to have significance that the Bible tells us it was done publicly. Meaning this thing wasn't hidden. No. Everybody knew that these guys, they disarmed them. It was something known to all. Who were the all? Don't forget that there are witnesses. Okay, angels. The public here stands for every realm of existence. In heaven, earth, and in hell, it was known that these powers were disarmed. So wherever that name is, <laughs> wherever the name is mentioned, whether in heaven, on earth, beneath, Do you get the point now? So the name has force, power, recognition, influence, and authority in every realm of existence. It was done publicly. Let's go back there. He disarmed the rulers. Don't you like the word disarmed? To disarm means to take away the weapons of destruction from. He disarmed. Who now holds the weapons? I do. Because when he arose, he said, in my name, go. In my name, go. In my, just show up. In my name. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and disgraced them publicly. He triumphed over them by him. Two more translations, including message. 
BBE says, having made himself free from the rule of authorities and powers, he put them openly to shame, glorying over them in it. Message translation. You don't have it. I have it. <laughs> Pastor Tishan, please can I have that back? Okay. Hallelujah. Colossians 2 verse 15. Message translation. 15. Let's see here. Message. Okay, I see you. And having no message. Verse 15. Yes, I love it. Um, so I'm trying to navigate there. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. He stripped all the spiritual tyrants in the universe of their sham authority at the cross and marched them naked through the streets. Hallelujah. And march them naked through the streets. Parade shot. Quick march. Parade shot. I used to command the parades. Not the naked parade. <laughs> Real parade, yes. I did. I did, I did, I did. He stripped them of all sham authority. Stripped all the spiritual tyrants in the universe of their sham authority at the cross and march them naked through the streets. Shall we rise? March them naked through the streets. There's power in the name of Jesus. You know what you need to do? Go back to these scriptures and meditate until you hear the voice of God. Meditate until light shows up in your spirit. Meditate until it becomes your reality. Meditate! Until your reign is established. We have received the abundance of grace. We have received the gift of righteousness. We reign. We reign. Refuse to be overcome by anything. Enforce your rulership. Enforce your reign. Enforce your reign. You gain dominion before you reign. You gain dominion before you exercise rulership. Until a man gains dominion, he does not exercise rulership. You gain dominion by light and power. When you gain access to light, power becomes expressed. That's how to create your domain. Within which you rule and reign. Hallelujah. I'd like you to just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. 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 Are you praying in the Holy Ghost? Pray in the Holy Ghost. 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 Yeah, 
Elohim Adonai ah. Elohim Adonai Elohim Adonai Pray in the Holy Ghost Pray in the Holy Ghost I rise into your place Elohim Adonai Elohim Adonai Receive a fresh baptism of the Spirit of God. Receive a fresh baptism of power. Receive a fresh baptism in the name of Jesus. I pray that the spirit of wisdom and revelation will rest mighty upon you. Lights, lights will come in massive intensities in the name of Jesus. Today I take authority over every satanic work in your life. I command you, Satan, stop your work now. Cease from your maneuvers in the name of Jesus. I command every yoke be broken in the name of Jesus. Yoke be broken in the name of Jesus. Yoke be broken in the name of Jesus. Every satanic action that has tampered with functions in your body. I command that satanic hand be broken now in the name of Jesus. I speak a reversal now in the name of Jesus. I command your body to function to the perfection that God originally intended it. Now in the precious name of Jesus. Every satanic influence in your life be broken now. I said be broken now. Be broken now in the name of Jesus every contention of the devil against your life and destiny now be broken in the name of jesus now be broken in the name of jesus every appetite not of god every appetite not of god every desire planted in your emotions by the devil now be broken in jesus name now be broken in jesus name now be broken in the name of jesus receive power in the name of jesus i said receive power in the name of jesus receive power in the name of jesus receive power in the name of jesus strength is released to your spirit strength is released to your spirit in the mighty name of jesus christ i like to pray for you you came tonight or you're watching online and you haven't received jesus as your lord and savior shall we bow our heads everywhere i pray for you wherever you are lay your hand over your chest and say lord jesus have mercy on me i am a sinner 
I believe you came and died for me and you rose up again for my sake. Wash me clean with your blood. Come into my life and live in me. Fill me with your spirit and your power. As you died for me, Jesus, I choose to live for you from today. I am yours in Jesus' name amen and if you said that prayer lift your hand up above your head as i pray for you father i thank you for everyone that you have drawn to yourself lord i ask that you establish them you fill them with your grace and mercy in the precious name of jesus father i thank you show them light fill them with the spirit of wisdom and revelation in jesus precious name amen hallelujah are you blessed tonight the conference continues tomorrow the time is five o'clock come on time uh, it's our intention to start and finish in good time hallelujah and Sunday will be the three services come with someone tomorrow come with a friend come with a friend the time is 5 p.m. and let's be here hallelujah we will make this announcement again on Sunday but uh, we we um, I, I would love to meet with anyone who is a part of this church who is a part of any association group fellowship in any of the universities around uh, you have been a leader or you are a leader in any of those associations we would like to talk with you so uh, we will get someone to take your names um, you can write your name with the uh, resident pastor just write your name on Sunday we will make the announcement again and I very likely might meet with you after one of the services. We want to talk about some plans that we have for campus invasion. Beginning this year we're invading the campus. We're going to take a music concert to campus this year. We're taking um, a spiritual empowerment conference and then school of purpose. Those three conferences we will run in the different universities here hallelujah are you excited about it yes 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 amen so we would do that and um while we route the campuses around us we're going to do a campus tour yes i've been to several campuses but we want to do a massive campus tour uh within nigeria and so we're starting this year and we will continue as the Lord gives us grace. So be part of it. Be part of it. Be part of it. Every one of us should be part of it. And if you are still on campus, that's even a great advantage. If you're still a student or you have been a student leader, you are a student leader, I'd like to speak with you so that we can work towards it. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. If you have your offerings, can you lift them up as we pray? Father, thank you for the privilege to give. If you're doing a transfer, the account numbers are on the screen. You can do a transfer. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, thank you. As we give, we thank you because your light settles upon us. Your wisdom dwells with us. Thank you because good measure, press down, shaken together and running over, you give to our bosom. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' precious name, amen. If you have your tithe, you can cast it as well. The Lord bless you. Hallelujah.